This is St. Mary's Church, and we are full of grace, and in this video series, we discuss all things visible and invisible with our faith. Greetings, everyone. My name is Eddie Jansen, and we are coming to you from inside of the Father John Garrity Center. And on episode two this week of Full of Grace, our special guest today is Father Bob Cole, who's sitting off to my left. So, Father, thanks so much for taking the time out to come and uh, give us a little bit of wisdom and share your thoughts about uh, the topic we're going to discuss today. Thanks for asking me, Eddie. Sure, absolutely. So, um, we've got a lot to discuss today. We've got a, a pretty big topic that uh, is um, a lot to digest in many different ways. But before we get there, um, we thought it would be a good idea to get to know you a little bit more, seeing that you've been here for about two years or so. And needless to say, the last six months or, or so have been a little murky as far as face-to-face -face, uh, communication with the parish. So this is going to be a great uh, evangelization tool and also a way for us to get to know you a little bit more. So, um, Father, uh, what, do you, what do you like about St. Mary's the most? How are you enjoying your retirement? Uh, were you ever a pastor at any of the previous parishes that you were at? And do you have a favorite ministry or anything that stands out to you over the years? Well, uh, a lot in there. Briefly, I've been a, I've been a, a priest for a little over 48 years now. Um, started out in a Polish church on the east side of Cleveland, uh, Immaculate Heart of Mary, and it's now called Slavic Village. And then I spent six years there, and then five years out at uh, St. Leo's in Cleveland, and then five years at St. Bernadette's in Westlake, and then 20 years down the street as pastor for the first time at St. Mary of the Falls. And then I left there and went to Oberlin, where I was pastor at Sacred Heart. And for some health reasons, with, especially with my foot, I was Bishop uh, Perez let me retire on Ju July the 1st, two years ago. And I really had nowhere to go uh, on my retirement. I don't own any property or any account or anything. And I thought, well, let me ask Father John if he'd be willing to take in a, a boarder. And I went and asked him. He said, sure, you're welcome to me and I've been here for the two years. It's just a wonderful place to be in retirement. Uh, you don't retire from being a priest, you retire from sure. being a pastor. So mm -hmm. I don't have any administrative responsibilities, no connection to St. Mary's Parish, but I do help out with usually Wednesday Mass um, and other Masses Father John may ask me to take and one or two Masses on the weekend. So I just feel very comfortable here and um, uh, it's nice to be back in the Olmsted Falls area where I've known so many people over the years, and, uh, but Father John's been most welcoming to me and glad to be here. Sure. Very good. We're certainly blessed to have you here, that's, that's for Thank sure. You. So um, we've got a really big topic that comes up uh, quite often in uh, not just the men's but the women's group as well, um, and that is the topic of trust. But I, I want to be a little more specific because you have to also ask, well, who is it that we are trusting? So uh, in this regard, it's going to be trust in God specifically. I wanted to make that distinction there. And there's a lot to digest on, on the topic. But um, obviously, in, in any relationship, not just the one that we have with God, but between any two people, you've got love as the omega. Like, that's the biggest, most important thing. But trust is awfully close to the top as well. It's almost as if you can't have one without the other. Um, as human beings, though, we have a tendency to trust ourselves a little bit more than we trust the Lord. I don't think there's a single human being on the planet that doesn't struggle with that. So I guess the question I would pose to you would be, how do you manage the tendency to trust me more than trusting God? So it's such an important question, age-old question that um, goes back to the, to the Garden of Eden. Uh, where Adam and Eve were told to um, trust that God knew what he was doing when he uh, told them not to eat of the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. The Bible is filled with stories of God asking people to trust him and people struggling to do so. Um, there is, has always been and probably always will be inbred into us when we were born, the desire to have things our way, to do our will, and to be the one that chooses how that's to come about. Um, that's, you can call that original sin. That's what went on in the garden, and that's what goes on in our heart uh, throughout our life. The fundamental sin is, to, is that my will be done. 
we will never understand our faith, certainly never understand Christianity, until we appreciate the fact that we are answerable or accountable to someone other than ourself. And as believers, that's God. And we trust that God knows what, God, what he's doing, has a plan for us, and a desire to help us and strengthen us to see that unfold in our life and to be a part of it. Um, it's a struggle, but nonetheless, it's our faith that says that God is a part of our life. One of the things that we've got to bear in mind is that our faith is such that it can't be defined in terms of what we believe. I think there are way too many Christians, and we'll speak, speak specifically as Catholics, who if you ask them, what does it mean to be a, a, a believer? They might give you a list, and as far as our Catholic faith, when we believe in the seven sacraments, we believe in the church, we believe in the position of the Pope, we believe in you know, the, the importance of the Blessed Mother, we believe in life after death, and not that those are not part of our, of our faith, they are, but that's not, you can't give a list. Our faith is based not on a what we believe, but in, in, a, in, a, in a, a who we trust. It's not a what, it's a who. And until and unless we come to realize that faith has to do with our relationship with God and through the person of Jesus Christ, then we even begin to scratch the surface of what faith is. And you know, I was thinking uh, the, the idea of having faith in this person of Jesus in terms of the, um, the gospel coming up next Sunday, which is the, 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 the story of the calming of the storm. And we're going to hear that next, next weekend. And it's, it's a familiar story, but it's a story about the apostles, some of whom were uh, professional fishermen. And they get in with all of the apostles. They get in the, onto the boat on this, under the, the, the Sea of Galilee. And I assume they, there was no storm coming at that time. The water looked smooth. The wind was fair. And the way they go, uh, sailing or rowing across the, uh, into, into, the, into the sea. And it says that they're going along, and as, the, as it gets dark, the wind begins to pick up, and the, and the waves begin to you know, rock and roll that boat, and they're fighting the waves. And it said at the fourth watch, which means around 3 o'clock in the morning, when night is at its darkest, and it's the most scary, and they're fighting this storm in fear for their life, it says, what did they do? They see Jesus. They were probably praying all along, <laughs> but they see Jesus, and they, they, they see him, and he's, uh, he might have been walking towards them for some time, but they notice him. And not till they see Jesus in their, amidst their storm do the wind, does the wind die down. And what's interesting in the story is that Peter says, Jesus, let me come to you. And Jesus says, come on down. And he gets out of the boat and begins to walk over the storm. Walk over or come over or overcome the storm. And it's going along fine until what does Peter do? He takes his, 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 he takes his, his, his sight off Jesus, and he begins to feel how the wind is. And when he, when he takes his, his, his sight off Jesus, when he's no longer looking at Jesus, not longer looking at Jesus, but looking at the storm, he begins to sink. And that's when Jesus says, oh, of you little faith, you know, why, why, why did you doubt? And he, and he pulls, picks him up by the hand, and they step into the boat. And it says the wind died down. It didn't say the boat, didn't, the boat immediately stopped rocking and rolling. The, their boat still had momentum, so the wind may have died down, but they're still in uncertainty, and they're still, but it was okay, because the, the Jesus was there. That is so applicable to all of us because all of us have storms in our life. Some of them big, some of them small, some of them major, some of them minor. But if we keep our face on Jesus and we look at him and see that he's in our boat, then no matter what comes our way, no matter what we face, no matter what we fear, it's okay. We have to, we have to bear that in mind. Um, somebody once said that, you know, that Christianity is not a lesson to be learned, but a person to be loved and a life to be lived. And until we come to grasp that, we haven't grasped faith. 
it's not a lesson to be learned where you can just pass this test of what Christianity is. It's a person to be loved. We love God because we are first loved by God. And based on that, that mutual love, we live it. We, we reflect it. Christianity is not a lesson to be learned, but a person to be loved and a life to be lived. I think that is so vital for all of us. It's, it's, it's the heart of our faith, and it's what we need, especially in those times when going gets rough. In that story, if I could squeeze in a quick follow-up question, um, we know what, what Peter's motive was behind that now. Um, he wants to actually see Jesus, because initially they, they thought he was a ghost. They couldn't particularly tell who this was or what this figure was over the water. But um, what did Jesus want from that exchange? Did he really care if Peter actually walked on water, came all the way out to him and everything is in good shape? Or did he just simply want to get Peter out of the boat, maybe push him out of his comfort zone a little bit as an act of, of trust? Was it simply just a matter of that? Well, you know, Jesus didn't ask him to come out. Peter's the one that asked. So in a sense, he put Jesus to the test. I mean, that's okay. I mean, we all, we all do that to some degree. We all have things we pray for. I know I've got a little, not, not even a little card anymore, but of all the people and the intentions and requests that I personally pray for, that I say every day, and I'm sure every one of us has things we pray for. Are we putting Jesus to the test? Well, I don't know. Depends how we pray, I guess. Uh, but we're asking for things, as Peter asked Jesus for something. Let me step out on, onto the water. Asking Jesus for things is fine. Trusting his response is most important. And you've heard it as well as I. Sometimes the answer is yes, sometimes it's no, sometimes it's let's wait a while. So I don't think Peter should be faulted for saying, give me a sign. He just should have been satisfied with the invitation that Jesus was saying, step out onto the storm and look at me and you will be fine no matter what may happen. Very good wisdom and definitely something we should take into consideration every day of our life. Well, that was uh, definitely a, a lot to chew on. I know there's a lot of different uh, directions that the topic of trust can go, but that's very good, good wisdom. And let me add one final point. Um, there is a, um, something I'll always remember. The great 20th century uh, uh, philosopher, uh, paleontologist, geologist, and Catholic priest, Teilhard de Chardin once said, he said, someday after mastering the winds and the waves and the tides and gravity, we will harness for God the energies of love. And then for the second time in the history of the world, man will have discovered fire. I, I first read that in college. I actually wrote that on my wall in the seminary. But it just struck me because it says that even if we master all of, the, all of science and we master the weather and everything else, it's not until we, until, we, until we master love. In other words, when we realize we are loved by the lover and we are the beloved and we return that, then we have discovered what fire is. And how interesting is that fire is the symbol of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is a love between the Father and the Son. The living love of God is the Holy Spirit. We'll discover the meaning of the Trinity. We'll, we'll discover the meaning of the Holy Spirit when we discover the meaning of how we are loved and how we return that love to each other in the everydayness of, of our life. Outstanding wisdom there. I want to squeeze in one last final point that's a little bit off topic, but definitely something we want to get to today. Um, this year, Father, as you know, we've had our fair share of challenges with the, uh, the virus and many other things. And interestingly enough, uh, right before Holy Week, you were actually set to uh, lead a, a talk or a discussion on the topic of suffering that probably therein has a lot of tie-ins to the concept of trust. So if you could maybe go over in a couple key uh, talking points uh, or whatever you're going to speak about on the topic of suffering, or maybe even as it relates to trust, what, what sort of ideas did you have for that talk? Yeah, I, I was asked to give a, a reflection on, on, on suffering and to do it during Lent when our focus is on the suffering of Jesus, how he bore his suffering, why he suffered, how he suffered, and how that relates to us, because everyone suffers. Uh, 
It's, it's, and it's more than just physical suffering. It's more than sickness or, or, or you know, uh, medical issues. It's all, there's mental, emotional, spiritual, psychological, worrying about jobs, worrying about family, friends, children. All this is a, is a manifestation of the cross. And the shadow of the cross falls across everyone's life. So it's, it's a reality that everyone, young and old and in between, has to deal with. And I wanted to do that I I during Lent, when, and it was the most opportune time when the cross looms large in, in, our, in our attention. And uh, I, uh, we couldn't do, I couldn't give that presentation, obviously, because everything shut down. And I hope this coming fall, We'll be able to reschedule that, uh, maybe in the church, maybe here at the Garrity, but certainly online. So we'll uh, hope you'll be able to. When I give this talk in the fall, and certainly inv invite you to come. This church is plenty big to spread out, but it also give the opportunity to ask any questions or ask some clarification or something that isn't clear. Um, it's I'd rather not tackle it now because it's kind of a lengthy thing. But I want to talk about is what is why do we suffer? Why is there suffering? And how do we suffer? And, and more specifically, what can we do with the sufferings that are forced upon us? Because there's, there's sufferings can be spiritually beneficial. How do we do it? How do we do it? So what I'm going to do is kind of develop that over a, a, a number of different examples in some very practical ways. So I invite you to come this coming fall. I don't think the date's been set. I know it's not been set yet. But watch the bulletin, watch the website, and uh, we'll let you know, and then give the opportunity to maybe flesh it out a little finer and uh, answer any questions that you may have. Okay. Excellent. Definitely got a lot of food for thought on a very big and important topic of trust as we uh, wrestle with that topic um, in the coming days. So uh, thank you very much uh, to all of you for joining us here on episode two of Full of Grace, and the topics are drawn from both our men's and our women's group that meet every Thursday night uh, here, either in the Garrity Center or outside. Um, if you have a question that you would like to contribute, come be a part of the conversation on Thursday. Um, we meet uh, every Thursday uh, during the school year, during the summer. Um, it's a little bit here and there with the men's group, but pay attention to the parish website. Um, all the details are on there, and as of course, uh, new participants are highly encouraged. So, Father, thank you very much for taking the time. We love to hear your insight, and we're very blessed to have you here. St. Mary says, has three priests and a deacon. Think about that for a minute. I mean, how blessed are we? Not just to have Father Bob, but to have three priests and a deacon. We are absolutely blessed beyond belief. So, I think we're just about out of time. But before we sign off, I would definitely love to ask uh, if you would lead us in a, a special blessing, not just for the parish itself, but also for the Full of Grace program as well as we go into this new normal per se, uh, that this might be a good evangelization tool uh, for this parish uh, and, and all other Catholics and Christians going forward. Okay. Let us pray. Lord God, you speak to us your word, and your word is Jesus. And Jesus is your face, a face that smiles upon us and shines upon us, and that gives us comfort when we are suffering, we are worrisome, when we have troubles. We ask that you help us look at the face of Jesus to be comforted by that care, that concern, that love that is there. Help us to trust you because you are near and you are with us and within us. So we ask for a strong faith, a confident faith, the faith of Jesus, the kind of faith that Jesus expressed when he prayed, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as, as we, we forgive, forgive those who trespass, trespass against, against us. us and lead, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. evil. And may the blessing of the good Lord be upon you today, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you so much, Father. That is going to do it for us today. I am Eddie Jansen saying thanks so much for being with us and so long from the Garrity Center. <laughs>